Since this release not that long ago, DeepSea created a lot of buzz by establishing itself as a legit competitor in the AI space. Using significantly less resources, they've managed to create useful models that competes with ChatGPT and others at a fraction of the cost. This is Rohan of Creatorific here, and stay tuned because today we'll be tying 3D printing together with DeepSea by using their text to image generator to create 3D prints such as this or whatever you choose. All right, so to get started, we're gonna head over to huggingface.co. What this website is, it's like a one-stop shop for different AI models, data sets, and interfaces with different platforms. So it's like a centralized platform that'll let you connect to the different DeepSeek models or models from other companies as well. Hugging Face offers users control over their information and it maintains industry standard security measures as well. So if data collection is a concern of yours, this is the method that I would use. So to get started, just click the sign up button, then you'll be prompted to complete this captcha. All right, so I've now signed up. So after signing up, just confirm your account creation via email and we could get started. Okay, so to get started, we wanna head over to Spaces and then we can start off by typing Janus Pro. And what we're looking for is this one, Janus Pro 7B, which is as of right now, DeepSeek's best model for image generation. So we'll just click this. So we wanna go over to text to image generation and we wanna generate a prompt. So before getting started, I just want to open up another tab for Hugging Face. Then I'm just going to go over to Model, and then I'm looking for the DeepSeek R1. And then keeping with the theme of this video, we're going to use the DeepSeek Chat AI to help us with generating an image prompt. All right, so this is what was produced. It's quite a long prompt. I asked it to create an optimized image prompt for Janus Pro 7B, and I wanted to generate the image of a blue whale arching its body upwards on a white background. And then it spit out this prompt down below. So I'm just gonna highlight this. So I'm just gonna highlight this. Um, copy it, and then I'm gonna paste in the Janus Pro 7B. But really quickly, I'd like to take a moment to highlight my paid sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is an awesome company offering high quality custom prototyping and fabrication services. They also do 3D printing and offer less common materials like aluminum, stainless steel, and titanium. Their pricing is affordable, they have low order minimums, they provide instant quotes with just the click of a button, and they make ordering simple. Just upload your model, input your quantity and material type, then hit the submit request button. Your order can then be finalized after receiving more accurate pricing via email. Visit pcbway.com to get started today. Okay, let's get back to it. All right, so now jumping back over to Janus Pro, let's paste our prompt and all right, so let's just generate our image or images and see what it spits out. Okay, so I kind of like these. I don't think they look bad. Um, some of these don't look that great. Like the fin on these ones are really pixelated or jagged looking. Also, it looks like there's some extra, like there's an extra fin here. Same with this one. Uh, this one I think is the better. I kind of like that. This one doesn't look bad either, but it's cutting off the fin, which is unfortunate. Okay, so down here in advanced options, you'll see CFG weight, temperature, and seed. So the lower the value in the CFG weight will give you more creativity in the different variations. The lower the value of the temperature will give you more, the lower the value of the temperature will give you more repetitive and less random responses. And the seed controls how it repeats in the next generation. So the same seed will produce more or less the same results if the parameters are unchanged. And different seeds will generate different outputs even with the same prompts. But I'm gonna just save this because I kind of like this. So back over on Hugging Face within Spaces, I'm just gonna search for Hunyan 3D2. And this looks to be an image to 3D modeling resource from Tencent. All right, so after dropping our image in, so we wanna click uh, Generate Shape and Texture, we'll remove background, and that's just gonna process. Also, everything that I'm mentioning is completely free, by the way. Okay, so this is what was created. There's a couple of extra bits in here, which came from this stream of water or liquid. Yep. So these I think could just be removed. Anatomically, I'm not sure what else is missing. Maybe a dorsal fin or something up here, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to just do a bit of extra to remove this, but this looks really good as well. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now I want to download the textured mesh. I'm not also seeing the texture. It would be nice to see the texture. How do I do that? Oh, so yeah, so 
to see what the texture as well we could just click this here to see what the textured mesh all right overall it's not too bad and really these can be either a good starting point or can even give you the results that you're looking for for your final product but it creates some pretty decent 3d models that i'd say that you can probably use so i'm just going to download the texture with the mesh if you're enjoying this content by the way please take a moment to like and subscribe to this channel as well as turn on the notification bell so in hindsight i realized that using the image 3d generator that i did probably wasn't the best idea since it only outputs in .glb format which my slicer couldn't open. So I ended up having to use Blender to convert it to a STL instead. There are a variety of alternative image 3D generators out there, like the ones that I covered in my chat GPT generated 3D prints video, such as Maker Labs Image 3D or Meshi, which will output STL or OBJ or both. You can find links for any of these resources in the video description as well, by the way. So using Blender, I just cleaned up the image a bit. And by this time, I was also regretting that the 3D model didn't include the dorsal fin, but I wasn't going to bother turning back at this point and it looked pretty good to me. I'm breezing through this step here because this isn't a dedicated video for Blender and this is an extra and maybe even unnecessary step that might not be needed. But if you are interested in seeing more coverage of Blender as it relates to 3D printing on my channel, then let me know in the comments below and I'll follow up. By no means am I an expert at using Blender though, and admittedly this is my first time even using Blender to clean up this image and add a pedestal, but I wouldn't mind getting the practice and sharing my development with you guys. Once I was done with Blender, I just saved the file, sent it over to my slicer software, and then sent it off for 3D printing. So that wraps it up. If you stuck around to the end, I appreciate it. To summarize, it looks like DeepSeek offers a decent alternative to other AI image generators out there, and it could be accessed and used for free. I don't think that it's the best, but it is a decent option and a good starting point if you're using it for 3D printing. So that's it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section, and if you enjoyed this type of content on 3D printing, then you should check out my other videos. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and until next time, see you then.